Hello, I'm Ron Murray. Over the past years, I have taken a, a large number of photographs of the main street in Cromwell, and I thought I would put a video together showing us the shops and offices as they were immediately before demolition. I've called the video Old Cromwell Shops and show each shop and office uh, in order, commencing from the uh, southwest side. Let's have a look at them. The first building is the Ministry of Works Information Centre, um, which was built west of the local town hall. Uh, in this there was a display of what the dam would look like uh, and um, one or two other ex exhibits uh, from the early days. Next to this was the Ministry of Works uh, offices which were later shifted out uh, the flat close to the uh, New Cromwell Cemetery. This is followed by the Cromwell War Memorial Hall, built around about 1960-odd, and which replaced uh, the old Athenaeum Hall uh, further down the street. This was followed by Leo Mangus's uh, carpet uh, and drapery shop uh, which had been built in recent years and uh, had living accommodation upstairs. Then came a house that I always knew as Mrs. Sanders' house. Uh, an elderly widow called Mrs. Sanders lived there for quite a number of years. This was followed by another old house uh, known as Dorcas Varco's house. It was a particularly early house and um, I always thought it would have been a pity if it could have been saved for display elsewhere, but the Ministry of Works bought it and burnt it to the ground. Further down the street was the house that I always knew as Herbie Booth's house, built sometime in the 1930s, occupied by Herb Booth, a, a carrier for some time, and then subsequently rented out to various people over the years. This was followed by uh, a souvenir shop called the Chinatown Gift Centre run by Neville and Helen Hucklebridge. It gained its name for the fact that the old Chinatown was uh, not far away and over the river bank. Uh, in its early days, this building uh, belonged to the late George Wishart and was used as a, as a paint shop for painting motor cars. Immediately next to, the, to that shop uh, uh, was the legal office of Broderick Parcella Mackay, where I worked for a number of years. Uh, in my younger school days, this was the um, shop owned by the Globe Bakery. Uh, at that stage there were three baker shops in Cromwell. Now there are none. After the bakery closed it was used for a time as a furniture shop by the late Jack Ferris. Next door was a very old galvanized iron cottage uh, which was demolished slightly uh, before the demolition, several years ahead in fact. Uh, but I put it on simply because uh, it's a very good sample of a, a very early cottage and was in fact the groom's cottage uh, for the Globe Hotel which uh, was immediately across the street. The next building on the way down the main street was uh, George Sanders's house, uh, a reasonably large house on an extremely small section. In the early days it belonged to uh, Dave Betts, a local builder who had his workshop next door. This is the building uh, used as part of the undertaking business by Cromwell and Southern Lakes Funerals, which was run by Leon Hayes.
and uh, Lewis Lindsay. Immediately next door was the builder's shop, um, owned at one stage by the late Jack Gibson and then sold to Cromwell and Southern Lakes Funeral uh, Services. One partner, Les Lindsay, lived in Queenstown and the other one, uh, the late Len Hayes, lived in Cromwell and uh, quite a lot of building from that shop. Immediately next door was probably the oldest building in the main street called Behrens' Barn. Behrens was a, uh, was a German who operated a wheelwright business in Cromwell in the uh, 1880s. So uh, this building would be somewhat over a hundred years old and uh, looked very much like it too. It was going to be rebuilt in the new Cromwell area or the old Cromwell area up the main street but it was in such bad state of repair it had to be demolished and the replica was rebuilt. Coming further down the street um, was a very small dwelling, uh, originally an army hut with some additions put on the front and the back of it. Uh, uh, in, the, in the days that I can remember it was uh, lived in by George Burroughs, uh, then bought by a number of people, but uh, not a particularly robust building. And um, its last job, it was opened up uh, as, a, as the Ponderosa Garden Shop, but was proved to be a very short-lived venture. Next comes the Cromwell Sports Shop, operated by uh, Alistair Stewart. Uh, it is also a very old building, it was a initially a paint shop operated by Warren Burroughs and then in later years as a TAB operated by the late Sid Harvey. Next came an extremely small building uh, uh, put up and operated by the ANZ Bank who were trying to get a foothold in the new town centre in Cromwell. And here it is here, it was really a branch office only. Next door was a, is a much more substantial building, uh, the power board offices and uh, repair workshop under, underneath. It's really a two-storey property, built in brick and uh, built from memory around about 1965. Next door was the discount grocery shop operated by Dave Stewart. Uh, who bought it from Neville Huckerbridge, who bought it from Peg and Jack Brown and the shop was initially opened by the late Andy Ree in the 1930s and subsequently built, rebuilt and altered. Next door was the Riverview Restaurant, uh, a much more modern building. I can actually remember being built probably sometime in the 1960s. operated by Colin Holmes at one stage of the piece. There were quite a few uh, people who had bought and sold the place and uh, before demolition it had a wine license where you could wine and dine there. Next door was a very old house which part of which still stands and uh, the other part had been converted into a fish shop. It's quite, it was quite a small shop, but reasonably successful. Further down the street, uh, the next shop was called the Feet Shoe Shop. Fairly self-evident sort of a title. Uh, it was not a large shop either, and had actually was an old building which had been modernised in the inside. Coming further down the street again was another old shop which had been done up and operated by the as a central craft cottage where a lot of people uh, produce knitting and spinning and pottery and sold it through there. I can remember it as a second hand shop, uh, also as Bowie's general store operated by Hick Mitchell and Dick Scott. And even earlier than that it was used as a skating rink. 
The next shop, further down the street, there was a, a particularly modern shop built by Neville and Helen Hucklebridge uh, as a wine centre. And uh, when the wine shop was um, closed due to demolition, the whole building was taken up and uh, assembled as a house uh, up on the top Cromwell flat. Matter of interest, I think that's Ethna Kennedy walking along, along the street. Well, the next shop was a particularly small one, uh, divided into two and operated by Robert Cox and his wife Rosalind. Rosalind sold Christian books on the left hand side and uh, uh, Robert had a small camera shop on the right hand side. When the, it became time to have the building demolished, uh, it was fairly portable and uh, was offered for sale. Next shop is the Cromwell Fashion Centre, uh, selling mostly uh, women's clothing, but was initially built by Leo Mangus some 20 odd years ago to uh, sell and display his carpets. Reasonably modern construction. Next building is the office of Mead and Stark Public Accountants, or Chartered Accountants, uh, and was initially built new by the late Fred Dunn, around about 20, 25 years ago. Now we come to the ladies' restroom, uh, which was built quite a few years ago. You'll notice there there's the odd broken window and uh, this is because it was getting close to demolish the whole of the buildings on the main street. All these photographs were taken before demolition which commenced in uh, late 1985. It's hard to believe that uh, the mall has been going up uh, in the new town centre for something like seven years. The next office is a fairly modern one too, uh, was at the time occupied by Hayward and Bracekirtle Chartered Accountants, uh, but initially built some 20 years ago and there was a bread shop uh, in one of the buildings and I don't quite remember what was in the other one. So we come further down the street uh, to a fairly old building, um, I can remember it in the 1950s uh, when uh, Peter Hoskins, an ex-carpenter, had a small bicycle repair shop there. It was then used by uh, Fred Dunn, a public accountant, uh, and as you'll see on the window there, Bodkin and Sunderland and Dupree as uh, solicitors, and uh, after they shifted out, uh, used by Microcraft uh, for the sale of computers. Then we come to the Otago Savings Bank, uh, and in those days the interest was 15.5%, far cry from what it is today. Uh, this building is on the site that was initially uh, Cromwell Taxi's depot, and the bank was uh, built inside, uh, completely renovated inside, but it's still basically a very old building. Another modernised building was that of uh, Williamson Electric, Brian Williamson, uh, who had an old building on Main Street modernised with a few bricks, showroom window, and uh, he did electrical work and television and radio repairs. Then we come to Jolly's Store, a fairly famous landmark on the Main Street of Cromwell. This was the old grain store uh, built in stone about 1900 and two uh, at the time the dredging boom was in operation. Uh, beautifully done in stonework and uh, over the years um, has been had various uses. Uh, the last one was as a medical centre for the local doctors before they shifted up to the mall. A matter of interest, <coughs> this building was shifted uh, stone by stone up into the Old Cromwell uh, precinct further up the street and above the uh, lake level. This building uh, of Arthur Bungard's hairdresser shop, it was also a very old building and uh, years ago was used by the local power board as a, an office for collecting accounts. 
The thing to notice really is that all these buildings are in a very, very run-down state and uh, if you look at this, the front of this building here, uh, the paintwork was very dilapidated but the Ministry of Works at the time didn't want any of the uh, owners or uh, lessees to, to make any improvements to the building because they wouldn't be compensated when they finally had to come down. Further down the street again we come to a fairly old building uh, which at that time was run by Belt's family butchery, uh, a man called Jan Belt from Alexandra and earlier than that was run as the Ding Dong Cash Butchery by Graham Bell and Crommel. I can also remember it being operated uh, in one side as Fitzgerald's Sponge Kitchen by Jim Fitzgerald and on the other side uh, the other shop in the building uh, by the late Ted Jelly as a draper. And so uh, next door to the um, Belts family butchery shop uh, was the old building that I always knew as Joe Roberts' shop when I was a boy. Uh, went through a number of hands and was finally ended up as Criffle's uh, tea rooms run by two women. Here it is here, but note particularly the, the uh, dilapidated appearance of the thing with the paint work scaling off the building, especially on the roof and the uh, uh, the backing to the roof. As we come further down the street uh, there was a block of three very small shops built by a man called Alf Scheid in the 1930s uh, and uh, they were initially used by the three stock agents for their offices uh, in the 19, early 1950s but later on uh, they're occupied by other people. In this case on the left hand side there's a baby's shop selling baby's clothing and um, uh, the two office, the two shops on the right were used by Russell Anderson the jeweller. I can also remember a radio repair shop there, a uh, second hand shop and uh, it's been used over a number of years by various people wanting temporary office accommodation. One of the land agents also operated from one of those buildings. <coughs> one of the better bu buildings on the main street of Cromwell was Mansour's Drapers Limited, uh, built on the site of the old Cromwell's, Cromwell Argus building and uh, done in reinforced concrete with central heating and uh, particularly well put together and probably a credit to the main street of Cromwell. That's more a Mansour standing outside. She retired uh, from the main street of Cromwell and did not follow the, the business up to the mall. Always affectionately known to everyone as auntie. Then we come further down the street to the public library in Cromwell uh, from where the town clerk also operated. And there was a spare room for the uh, known as the band room. This building was opened around about 1923 or 24, built in fairly solid sort of concrete. Then we come to Leckie's Restaurant, a double storied property with the shop underneath and the residence up above. Um, it was used many years ago by uh, Mrs. Davies as a tea rooms and later on by Bob Orr as the tea rooms. Since then it's been through several hands and uh, it's had several facelifts but it's still basically a fairly old building. And in the very early days it was used as a, uh, a painter's shop uh, and, and for displaying wallpaper. Then we come to the Cromwell News Agency building um, which has operated uh, as a news agency uh, and gift shop for a number of years. Uh, at that stage it was uh, you, was run by Godfrey Reeves um, and when the shop was demolished uh, he went into a new shop up in the mall. It's actually a very, it was a very very old building and on an extremely small section if you went out the back door of the shop you just looked straight down the river bank. Then we come down to Cromwell Panel Beaters, a fairly substantial concrete garage 
uh, built slightly before the last World War for Roy Congleton, who had a service station on one side, uh, and immediately adjoining had a repair garage. Um, present, uh, at the present time, this photo was taken was used as, as a panel beater shop, uh, and uh, not uh, no repairs at all were done there. Then we come to Beatty's service station, uh, which was run by Alan and Jan Beatty at the time of demolition, and they shifted up to the mall. Uh, but this was also built by Roy Congleton, and I can remember this, it would be around about 1936-1937. Uh, it's had a few additions, a few facelifts, but still a basically fairly old building. When Roy Congleton built the service station, he built a fairly large house alongside and that was used for residential accommodation. Uh, it's quite an attractive house but really has no section at all. Now immediately on the left of that you'll see a fairly large uh, building and that was used for housing the NZR buses that, offer, that went from Cromwell to Dunedin each day. It was quite a large garage and I think from memory would hold two buses at a time. Now this picture really contains uh, three different items. On the right hand side you'll see uh, a couple of buses there. Uh, they are part of the NZR bus fleet and uh, operated from that particular yard. Then you'll see the Dam Busters uh, mobile restaurant or pie car uh, which was parked there. Uh, and this has been built and brought to Cromwell by an Omaru couple. Uh, and still operates up near the mall. And then you'll see the Game Packers building uh, from which frozen deer meat was sent away and processed. Uh, in the 1936-37 uh, this building was operated by Lane's Cordials and uh, where they made lemonade and other soft drinks. Then used as a rabbit factory and had quite a few uses over the years. So on the south side of the main street, that was the last commercial building. Uh, but before the bridge is reached, uh, there was a plot of ground and uh, after the First World War, it was made into a War Memorials Gardens with a, <coughs> a large monument. And on, on the left hand side, covered by the trees, was a very large German field gun. But these grounds were done up very, very well indeed, and uh, the monument and gun were subsequently shifted up to the Cromwell Town Hall so that they wouldn't be subject to flooding. Now before we work our way up the other side of the main street, just let's have a look at the street under normal business conditions. Uh, as you can see here, it's choked with cars, uh, and uh, as I mentioned, I deliberately excluded all cars from my the buildings I'd photographed because I wanted the building and not the car. But, so if we look down the south end of the, or if we look down the main street, looking east, this is what it looked like. Now from the same position on a different day, we'll look upstream. And this is what it looked like uh, looking what we knew as up the street. Golden Age Hotel on the right, Joe Roberts' shop on the left, and uh, so you can look right up the street beyond the post office, uh, almost to Wishart's Garage. So having got an overall view of the property, let's now work our way up the, uh, the other side of the main street, shop by shop. On the northeast side of the uh, bridge, the first building is a very old stone building which was reputed to be the stables for Cobb and Co's coaches in the very early days. Uh, at the time this photograph was taken, it was used as a car park and here you can see part of the old building and quite a few cars around. Car parking was extremely difficult down the main street. And then moving up the street we come to the uh, the bus office for uh, New Zealand Road Services. Uh, this was initially um, Elf Scott's Bakery from the 1920s, 1930s. Then we come to the old Hotel Cromwell uh, formerly known as Dawson's Hotel in 1902 and 1903. On the right hand side is the office of the Totalised Age Agency Board, and then the hotel, 
uh, and on the very left hand side of the hotel the old Bank of New Zealand buildings. When we come to the site uh, of Roy's Steak Bar um, and Taxi Stand. In my school days uh, this was a building built by the late Bill Sanders who operated the taxi and also had a small uh, uh, tea rooms and sold oranges, lollies, milkshakes and so on. Reasonably substantial concrete building. Next we come to a fairly famous landmark, the Old Free Trade Butchery. Operated by Ralph Sanders until his death and then by uh, two of his sons. The free, free Trade Butchery operated in the main street in Cromwell for over a hundred years but not from the same site. It was approximately on that site and then uh, it, in the pre-depression years uh, shifted over to the other side of the street and then this building was uh, built in brick and concrete and uh, the business shifted back there. Rel took it over from his father, the late Charlie Sanders. And then we come to the old discount store operated by Alan Dick. This is a particularly old building and in 1870 was operated as Victoria store selling groceries and operating what they call the revolving library. Then we come to Dalgetty's building. Uh, this was built, was always known as Jolly's building and Jolly's Hill uh, on the corner of the uh, corner of the main street and it was initially built in wood and iron and during the dredging boom about 1901 or 1902 uh, it was completely uh, rebuilt in stone. It was really quite a fine building. Now working our way up the street uh, next building is the Golden Age Hotel. This was one of the earliest hotels on the scene in the early days dating from about 1866. Uh, it was initially wood and iron and a very dingy looking place. Uh, rebuilt in stone about 1903 or 4 and then over the years rough cast which is really a pity because the original stonework was something to to be proud of. Now we come to London House which we always, always knew as Jelly Brothers uh, shop but it was initially uh, built by a man called Tallboys and one of his employees was a man called Jelly and it was sold to Bill Jelly and um, he eventually sold to his sons Len and Ted. In later years Jack Ferris had it as a furniture shop and until his death, death Bob Howard had it as a uh, television and uh, audio and radio shop. We come to the old National Bank in Cromwell uh, this was initially the Bank of New South Wales in about 1880, uh, rebuilt a little bit uh, and redesigned around about uh, 1920s. But the site of the old Bank of New South Wales building and um, it, eventually shift, it eventually shifted up to the mall too. Then we come to Wrightson's car park. As I mentioned, car parking was a great problem down the main street. Uh, and um, Wrightson's owned the building on the left hand side of this property and they opened it up for car parking. Then we come to the Wrightson NMA building. Uh, Wrightson NMA were uh, a firm of stock agents operating from Dunedin and the building they're in was initially the old Cromwell Hotel in the 1870s. <coughs> it had been rebuilt in stone and uh, early on operated by Solomon the Draper, um, Rahui Tea Rooms and operated also as a billiard rooms uh, and uh, about 1948 or 49 the Cromwell Argus operated from there. So it has been through quite a few uh, owners. Then we come to Cromwell Pharmacy. 
operated by Robert Cox, who bought from his father, Basil Cox. Prior to that, it was uh, operated as a chemist shop by Henry Hotop. But its original history is quite interesting. It was the old Bank of New Zealand. And when the, uh, the old colonial bank uh, went broke down the street, uh, the directors of the Bank of New Zealand bought the bottom bank because it was a larger building and then sold and leased this building here. In fact, even during the time when Basil Cox was operating it, the old, the old safe for the bank was, uh, uh, was still there. Upstairs, uh, there was a dental surgery operated uh, by Dick O'Kane. Next building uh, was the current Bank of New Zealand, concrete block construction, uh, featuring some local stone on one wall. It's rather interesting, this was the original site of Wishart's uh, smithy, blacksmith shop in the 1870s. And when uh, the site was excavated for uh, laying down a concrete floor, um, quite a lot of horseshoes and nails uh, and so on were found. The next building on our way up the street was, was Bruce Jackson's Draper's shop. Uh, Bruce, as you can see, he had most, most of his stock out in the street. He never seemed to be able to get it all inside at once. But this building, it was, it was a, a, a very well built building, built in 1918 for Henry Barry Bowie, the grocer. And alongside, uh, he had a small office built which at the time this photo was taken was occupied by uh, one of the uh, la uh, land agents and draftsmen. Earlier than that, uh, it was used by a hairdresser and earlier than that by a local uh, firm of solicitors, Broderick and Parcel. Now, uh, across that particular street called Sligo Street, uh, we come to the post office area. In the background you'll see part of the building of the old Cromwell Athenaeum Hall and uh, this uh, building here was built in what was known as the post office car park. Prior to that there was a hotel on, the, on that particular corner site called the Temperance Hotel. Let's now have a look at the post office. Then we come to the Cromwell post office itself. Uh, initially it was an old stone building and it has been renovated and done up over a period of years. Uh, it was enlarged considerably uh, to cope with the rush during the, the gold boom years which around about 1900 to about 1910. And so we went away up the street towards Wishart's Garage. There are two houses there. Uh, the one on the left hand side was used by Harold Popperwell the hairdresser. Uh, when the ministry took over the little building he was using they offered them the use of that for several years. So that was a hairdressing shop. And then uh, in this particular picture you'll see part of the building of Wishart's Garage with the name on it and between there and the houses a cousin of mine called John Anson built a replica of a gold mining village. Uh, and here you see a replica of a hotel, the Bank of New Zealand, blacksmith shop and Cobham Coast coaches and uh, when you walk through there there are a display of implements and an old house further up the hill uh, done up with all the antiques of the gold mining days and uh, showing how these cottages were furnished. It's since been removed and so we get up to Wishart's Garage. This place has got quite a history it was uh, shifted from down the street into this site uh, by the late Robert Wishart in 1880. And then as motor traffic uh, became the most important thing, uh, he still used a smithy but built a bit more onto the garage uh, where he could s uh, service motor vehicles and put in outside pumps which are very rarely seen in New Zealand nowadays and uh, carried on there. Uh, he sold out to his son George Wishart, uh, who sold out to his son Doug Wishart. And at the time of demolition it had been bought and uh, uh, leased to uh, uh, Lears Ritchie who was a local mechanic. 
But the point to look at in this photograph is just how dowdy uh, and untidy it looked. The paintwork was really peeling off, and yet the owners uh, or lessees were not allowed to uh, update it at all. This is the original smithy with the residence upstairs. Um, quite a reasonably sized house with a large blacksmith shop inside. And on the left where those cars are parked was the old Globe Hotel one of the nine hotels in Cromwell. We then come to the Caltex garage um, owned by Graham Blackwood. Uh, Graham sold tractors, sold fuel and serviced all motor vehicles. It was a fairly new garage really and uh, uh, quite a large expensive workshop. As we work our way up the street the next building is a house that I always knew as Bob Bowie's house, but was subsequently lived in by the town clerk Ron Farquhar for a number of years. A fairly substantial building uh, and built on a prominent uh, part of the town with a reasonable view. The next house is an extremely old stone building that's been on the site for more than a hundred years. However, its interest is that the old Cromwell precinct has been shifted up to the site and this building forms the only original building on the site but has been, alongside has been built uh, Behrens' Barn, uh, London House, D.A. Jolly and Sons Store. So to together they'll be on the, almost on the shores of the lake and show some of the old stone buildings that existed in the early days. And further up the street uh, is the old uh, lodge building which was built uh, around about 1899 to 1900 on uh, ground donated by Jim Stewart who was the publican of the Victoria Hotel. It's a very old building and still in remarkably good order. The builder was William Gear. Then we come to the Victoria Hotel on the uh, corner of the street. Uh, this was uh, run by James Stewart uh, for many years up to about 1900 when he died and his widow carried on for several years afterwards. It was originally built in beautiful stone uh, but has since been plastered over. Has been rebuilt uh, and remodeled on several occasions and now is known as the Victoria Arms Hotel. It was not demolished in the um, demolition um, of the rest of the buildings since it's going to be above lake level. Finally we come to the last building in the main street uh, which will not be uh, flooded either and that is Cromwell Hardware. It was initially an accommodation uh, house for wagoners in the early days went through a number of hands and um, it was best known as being Eddie Hayes' workshop until about 1969 to 70. Uh, it's still, still used now as a second hand shop. Well that's the show folks. I hope that some of you ones who have been looking at this, uh, it will bring back a few memories of uh, what used to be our main street and uh, uh, now is uh, almost unrecognisable. Although you'll notice that one or two buildings have been left, the old Athenaeum Hall um, and um, part of the old school.